best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. I've done a lot of videos about disruption in the market, how markets change, and how you adapt to them. There's been uh, there's been lots and lots of content. Uh, so much that, you know, people make jokes about, you know, hitting the same topics over again. Well, this isn't the same topic, I promise. Uh, but I do want to talk about disruption and how you tackle it and how you handle it and where you can kind of, you know, identify winners and losers in that process. Um, you know, hey, you, you probably have already seen the video, or I, I don't know. Uh, but and who knows if I'm recording this there, there could be between the recording of this and the actual posting of the video, cause it, it takes several days to actually put something out. Um, you know, there, this drama could have continued, probably not, but, uh, somebody pointed Eric Larson at my video, uh, about, you know, bookstores and a fairly simple video, as I mentioned, I think repeated times, I tend to repeat myself a lot, uh, in the video, I talk about, you know, big frustration was, you know, kind of this person saying, you know, you can't believe what you see with your own eyes. You can't believe it. You need to go look at other places. And, um, you know, it, 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 it irked me because I think the right answer is always to go experience things for yourself. Yeah, you're not seeing the whole story because you can't see everything with your own eyes, but it, but it helps. You know, don't get your information regurgitated through someone else. Hell, isn't that what a lot of the comic pros have complained about uh, various kind of online groups that their big problem is, is that kind of one hate-filled person spews a bunch of nonsense and everybody just just listens and gobbles it up. I, I mean, it, it's weird for me, having worked in comics, worked with comics, uh, sold comics, I talked about comics, and loved comics more than anything. It's weird to me to see so much advice given out from people who are also in comics that is the complete antithesis of the heroes that they write. I mean, you just, you got to stop for a second and imagine uh, Superman, like, flying in, going, uh, you know, don't listen to those people. They're a hate group. It's like, what, this random crowd of people over here? It's like, yeah, they're a hate group. It's like, yeah, you know, I don't see any kind of white masks and torches. It seems like they're just angry about something. And, you know, Superman going, well, we should burn those people to the ground. Like, Jesus Christ, Superman, what happened to you? But anyway, this is, this is how, uh, it, is, it, it irks me. But anyway, in, in Larson's, uh, and I already did the video responding to that, but there's one line that's haunted me that stayed with me. One thing he concluded with um, that, that bugs me immensely, and it bugs me because it is a point of view I've heard from other people in comics a lot. And again, it's the opposite of what a Superman, a Batman, or a Savage Dragon, or, or Savage Dragon's kid, who now has the name of Savage Dragon, or hell, even uh, his wife, who he you know, bangs around the apartment on a regular basis. It's the opposite of what they would say. And the comment is that basically it's, you know, long thread talking about basically the debate is, you know, can U.S. comics learn from manga? And uh, my my perspective is, yeah, quite a bit. Actually, there's a lot to, to learn about that market. Eric Larson's perspective was we tried all those things that didn't work. You know, no, it's completely different. And uh, he ends his comment with this. And this is the line that I that I that I truly, truly hate. There's no change they can make meaning U.S. publishers. In this case, he's talking about Marvel and DC. I'm not sure why he didn't lump image into this, but okay. There's no change they can make which will make their books viable in that market. There's no change. Impossible. And by that market, um, it's hard to tell whether he means kind of the market where manga is being sold, uh, which is, you know, giant volume big box stores that are moving kind of hundreds of thousands of copies, millions of copies, it's why, you know, in the recent bookseller numbers, you see that uh, manga has grown, whereas YA has shrunk and comics has shrunk. And comics is hovering around 4%. There's another article up on ICV2 talking about kind of the state of the market. And uh, the, the title of the, the article is, is really around uh, kind of, you know, the comic industry, you know, broke in 2022. It, it, it was a bust year. And a lot of people, I mean, that's, that's circulating, getting videos. Uh, my buddy Wes over there did a video. Um, <laughs> please stop trying to make trouble between Wes and I. He's, a, he's his own guy. He does his own thing. I'm my own guy. I do my own thing. Um, I do not, uh, you know, besties chat with Wes every day. Um, but it, it, you know, yeah. stop trying to make trouble, please. Anyway, uh, 
I'm with anyone for that matter. I'm not that kind of guy. You're, you're barking up the wrong tree. Anyway, um, a lot of people are making articles and videos and other things. Proof, proof the comic industry is dying. Well, I, it's proof the comic industry needs help, and it, it's proof the comic industry is in bad shape if we're talking about the U.S. Western traditional comic market, superhero books. Uh, it's That's all definitely true. But there's play they could do to help themselves. In this instance, Eric Larson sounds exactly like uh, the, the various kind of fatalists uh, on Kiwi Farms and, and other places, right? The comic industry is the dead, rotting corpse. Nothing can be done. You know, anyone who's worked in business, anyone who's handled corruption, knows that is absolutely not true. There's always something that can be done. You have to have the willpower, the intelligence to do it. By the way, on that ICV2 article, um, not to do a complete analysis, but this idea that uh, things things broke in 2022, uh, I think I think the the drop is is real there. But I have the same amount of skepticism to the math. So listen to my words very carefully to the math in that article, as I did in 2020 and 2021 when articles were written saying everything was going through the roof, because. Those articles, the one that said everything was amazing, blowing up, going great, they were relying on a tiny sample set of data. They were not relying on diamond numbers. After COVID, things shifted. And as we went into COVID, the comic numbers were soft. A lot of things were headed down. And suddenly, magically, things shut down for a couple months and they got to partially open up again. And business is two to three X what it was. I don't agree. I don't believe it. I did then. There's plenty of videos proving that. And I don't now. If you're in any type of retailer, Facebook groups, or you know, you talk to people at Comments Pro, or you go into a shop, that was not the experience people were having. Comics were also uh, not being sold, meaning floppy traditional U.S. comics. They're not being sold outside the direct markets. There wasn't some secret other place they were moving. I think that uh, the... Put it this way, I think that what happened was in 2000 and 2021, um, a number of, you know, basically the way that a number of creators and people inside comics decided to respond to the criticism that things weren't working was to jump on the opportunity now that the numbers were obscured and say, ah, oh, it's amazing now. It's huge now. And they exaggerated the strength of the market. I don't believe things were that strong in 2020, 2021. I know lots of retailers who went out of business during that time period. A lot of people who got out of new comics during that time period who uh, didn't, didn't have a great time. So I don't buy it. Which means in 2023, things suddenly dropping through the floor, things suddenly is a disaster. I mean, yeah, I think things have continued to sink. But I think the percentage of drop is a lot smaller because I think things were never that high to begin with. That's the part I disagree with. And again, I, you know, we, we could all debate it without looking at the numbers. It is, a, it is a debate of speculation. But I think I have a lot better anecdotal evidence to the people saying things were amazing. Again, manga's are doing great. But is there stuff to learn? Yeah, there's tons of stuff to learn. And I've done several videos about that, things that you should look at, things you should adapt, things you can consider if you're a creator or you're a publisher. And several publishers are doing those things, and they are working hard. I know nobody inside comics wants to see me pick a fight with Eric Larson. And for what it's worth, you know, I have no heat, no malice toward, toward Larson. None. But I don't like the attitude. I think the attitude sucks. I think it's defeatist. I think as one of the people who does have name recognition in the industry, there should be more attempts to be honest and also fight. Where's the fighting spirit? Where is the... Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Captain America, or Savage Dragon spirit that's going to say, you know what, I'm not going to roll over here and just say there's nothing that can be done. I'm going to look on 3,500 copies a month. So, you know, I, 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 I agree. He's looking at it at a low state. But all the same, there are ways to improve. There are ways to pick it up. When I, I you know, I, I've looked at, I've studied disruption and market change and tech transformation for 25, 30 years. This is, in effect, what I do and make a lot of money at. It's what helped me fund comic shops. It's what helped me fund my love of comics. 
has been being on top of this kind of stuff. Now, you don't have to listen to me and you can ignore it. And I, just, what, what does he know? You know, ah, he's just, he's not with CG. He is with CG. I wish the people who, uh, you know, like to run around claiming I'm part of a group or claiming I'm, uh, you know, the enemy of a part of a group, whatever. Uh, please, all of you get into one room, lock the door and sort it out. Meanwhile, I'm going to fill that room with water. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're not advocating murder here. Just, just getting people a little wet. That's all. Um, if you look at market disruption, and one of the best examples I like to give is Kodak. Lots of people say Blockbuster. Blockbuster is a little bit more of a dodgy proposition because of several of their loans over expansion. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of indicators that said even if digital and Netflix and that stuff hadn't come along, you know, uh, Blockbuster was going to be in some trouble. But Kodak is a more interesting one because Kodak was a leader and dominant factor in cameras. People took photos, they used Kodak film, they used Kodak cameras, and they were on top of that market. Just like Marvel and DC, they were the big guys, and they uh, enjoyed their position. And in many cases, they were quite arrogant about their position. If you listen to Kodak talk about digital when it first started uh, coming out, digital cameras, Kodak was uh, pretty, pretty boastful about the fact that they were never going to be displaced as the person on top, ever. And then it became clear that it turned out uh, digital cameras were, were popular. Uh, Kodak invested huge. And this is the part that I think a lot of people uh, don't know or have forgotten or, or missed in the story. Uh, Kodak invested a ton of money to buy a digital camera company. To say, you know, we're, we, we're going to use our market strength. We're big. We're just going to buy our way and keep winning and keep leading the market. But Kodak's mistake, and, and several executives have, have now come forward and, and written about this and given interviews about this and admitted it. In this instance, it's one of those things that I, I think more people in comics should do. They should actually admit where the mistakes were made. Kodak admitted that they missed what was happening. It wasn't that, uh, you know, people just preferred a digital photo rather than one from film. It was that they preferred the convenience of not going into a store, not buying film, not having to, you know, shoot a bunch of pictures. I mean, Kodak believed the thing they were solving was that you could instantly see a little preview of the photo you took. You could instantly see what you did. And so if you didn't like your photo, you could take a new one. And, and a lot of people did want that, no mistake about it, but they wanted more than that. They wanted the convenience of carrying around one thing. And so when the iPhone came out, and the iPhone uh, could take pictures, and you're already carrying around a phone, which is now a browser and a game machine and everything else, all in one device, and a camera, why would anyone bother with Kodak anymore? They wouldn't. And they didn't. And initially, Kodak uh, argued about it, saying, you know, why would anybody, the, the iPhone takes lower quality pictures. You know, you get a much higher resolution photo with our digital camera technology we bought or, or with film. You know, the, look at the megapixels on that iPhone. It sucks. It turns out people were willing to take a lower quality photo, especially if they're going to be sharing it around digitally, that have to deal with the inconvenience of hauling around two cameras. It turns out that uh, the bar of quality and the bar of what uh, Kodak thought the market wanted was not what they wanted. And so there's a huge parallel there to comics. If you talk about Marvel, DC, or even Eric Larson's own comments, it's like, ah, the audience doesn't want black and white. Ah, the audience wouldn't, doesn't, doesn't want uh, bigger lines, that kind of stuff. He's looking at the problem wrong. A lot of people in comics are. What is it that people truly want? Well, in many cases, they want a lower price point. They want more convenience. They do desire to kind of pick these things up on a whim. They don't like to plan it. Keep in mind, this is somebody who, who ran a comic shop for 25 years. You know something that is a big myth that both retailers and people inside comics believe? It's that customers like hauling their ass into a store on Wednesday to pick up new comics. The Wednesday warrior phenomenon. A lot of people hail this as a, you know, a, a, a key part of comics. It's not. By and large, a lot of customers hate the fact that if they want to, you know, hit a specific comic, if they want to make sure they get something in their box, that they have to do a lot of logistics or, or haul themselves into a store on Wednesday. 
Sure, they do like the social aspect of being in sometimes with friends, but it's being with friends that they like. It's not going in on a Wednesday. It's absurd. And yet, I, I can't tell you how many people in comics have said, yeah, comic customers, they're never going to go to digital because they like going into a shop every Wednesday too much. That's insane thinking. And that's the same kind of thought that prevents people from making change. So let me pivot for a moment to all the people who are like, comics are dead, it's corpse, it's never going to get better. There's tons of ways it can get better. But it does require different thinking. And in most cases, requiring different thinking means different people. Unfortunately, as much as humans have the capacity to learn and grow and evolve and all that other stuff, as much as we have the, the ability to change, by and large, most people are creatures of habit, stuck in their own ways, and tend to be hateful, nasty little creatures when you leave them to their own devices. It's why when you see the, uh, you know, when we, we saw the quote-unquote hateful war erupt on Twitter around toxic fans, the thing that was most popular with comic professionals and creators in responding to those fans was not turning a blind eye to it, was not, you know, reacting politely to it. It was to get nasty themselves. It was to clap back. It was to create people who have no real influence in anything who are going to constantly regurgitate a bunch of nasty language. Fight fire with fire. How bizarre is that? In all, in all honesty, in all parts of this, how crazy is it that we have a, a world of comics with, with superheroes and ideals and morals and everything else? This is a business. Uh, when it comes time to fight uh, a negative force, the tool that is reached for by comics is negativity. It's more. Oh, I don't like what uh, the Zach guy is saying? Well, the best way to respond is to be super nasty in return. The best way to respond is to you know, go to the absolute most extreme insults I could possibly think of. Harass. Attack people in DM. By the way, this isn't an excuse for the original bad behavior. It's, it's, it's simply you don't fight bad behavior with bad behavior. I don't know. I missed that part in the Spider-Man comic. With great power comes the ability to kick the guy in the nuts. It would have been a very different comic. In fairness, maybe a little bit more fun. I'm kidding. Anyway, I, I'm bothered by that line. Because it's one you hear echoed a lot. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing that can be done. Well, that's, uh, you've lost. I do believe comics can pull themselves out, and I believe comics will emerge. But not with these people. Anyone who's sitting around saying, there's nothing that can be done, we've done everything, I can't do it. You know, the only thing I can do is bitch about angry people at Twitter. That's, that's, that's the height of my capabilities today, is I'm going to complain about people on Twitter. Yeah, those people, they aren't going to make it. They will not be part of the next resurgence. It's going to drift on, on and out. You know, you're going to go to a con, you're going to see several of these people, they're going to age terribly, and you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember when that person was a big deal. They're not part of the industry anymore. I don't know. It's a uh, try harder. The way you tackle disruption is you try. You, you observe. You look with your own eyes. You, you fight. Be a hero. Fight. Thanks for listening.